Thank you everyone for coming tonight. We weren't sure how many people we were gonna have with all of the new restrictions, but I guess nobody gets to go anywhere. So we might as well be here together. Um, I'm so I'm so grateful that Lilia has uh, agreed to share her presentation with us. Um, it's always amazing um, to learn about the expertise that we have within the, the, the ELA family. And so we have an experienced, wonderful teacher here who's going to share with us and we're so excited. And so without saying any more, I'm going to turn it over to Lilia. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I teach at a regular school, uh, St. Brandon School. It's at Edmonton Catholic Junior High, uh, Science and Ukrainian LA. And I'm principal at the uh, Ukrainian Saturday School. So uh, this uh, fall, I had a student teacher and uh, he started using this program and the kids really loved it because it was very interactive. And yeah, sure, at the end, before Christmas, we had to switch online. And I noticed even this, this program, Nearpod, it was even better suited when we are online because now, you know, you're not talking to the screen. That's what I find a lot of time. The kids turn off the cameras and then you feel like you're talking to yourself. This way, I see that they are interactive, they are answering, they are inputting something and they're doing something. So they participate in class. So I'm going to turn on screen. Um, so here you go. So the, the point is to make it more interactive and especially when we are online learning, but certainly you can do it in class. So we did it all the time when the kids were in class. It's a very simple, uh, you can make it presentation interactive, include some quizzes, surveys, videos, open questions, uh, brainstorming, a whiteboard, and you name it. Um, now, why use this program? There's another program, Pear Deck, also very similar to it. Uh, both of them are extension to Google Slides, but um, uh, to Google um, uh, Drive. So you, if you have your Google Slides, you can see that add-ons. Um, but I don't know, they, I like Nearpod. It has a little bit more perk to it than Pear Deck. Um, so it's very easy delivery for the presentation. Um, why? Because when you have a, you know, you have a usual PowerPoint or Google slide, so you can quickly download to the Nearpod, takes a minute or seconds, and then make a lesson more interactive by adding um, to this existing, your PowerPoint, your Google slides, um, a, a different stuff like PDFs. Uh, you can download video to your presentation. You can download um, um, different different documents into into this one, and it makes one presentation. So I will show how it is, and um, definitely this presentation will be transferred to the devices for each student in a class, or if they are at home, it would be from home. So I will try today today to show you one, and you will be my students, and you will see how like you have to do something otherwise on my end and everyone sees that you're not working. So that's why I motivate students that the students need to show that they do something or they know something because they don't wanna look, oh, I look stupid, I didn't write anything. So it kind of also motivates them. Although they, you can switch, they could see themselves, the names or they cannot see. So it's up to you, you can make it discreet and they would just see a dot, 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 but they, they would see each other's answers. So. Uh, this is a live formative, it gives you the live formative assessment. That's also good. Um, so it, it, the evaluation activities to your presentation, it gives you this, this option. So as a teacher, you can create your own quizzes here, little sur surveys, open-ended questions, uh, matching pairs, quizzes, uh, and really that will show you what students understand. You can do this prior to teaching, like before you're doing your uh, presentation, what do they know? And after you've done it, you can you know, ask those questions and include quizzes or open-ended questions or matching to kind of evaluate what did they understand from your lesson. So um, also it gives you this ongoing assessment and self-assessment for students as well. So. Um, the student can also understand like, oh, okay, I'm not doing very well here. Maybe I should be, uh, you know, trying to understand this better. 
So that's also the option. And it give, will give you all the reports with it that you can keep reports and even download to your Google Classroom. Um, so if you have, a, I, I did ask you to have two devices. So if you do have a device, uh, second one, um, you could or on maybe do the second screen. Like ideally two devices would be fine. Then you can go and do step-by-step step right now and to log in, create account, and I kind of see how it looks like. So this is a home page. So if you do have a, a second um, computer, you can uh, just write nearpod.com and you get there uh, to the home page. So the home page will look like this for you. So obviously it is in English, but you can download lessons and make lessons in any language. That's what I do for my Ukrainian LA. So if you get there, that's what the home page look like. You need to click teacher and it will give you to get you to this page. In this page, so you don't have to create anything because you already sign up uh, with your whatever account on your computer. You just go sign up with Google, click on it, and it will automatically you know, connect you with all your Google Drive. So no need to do anything. So that's basically where you would be if you connect, it should get you to page like this, except those are my lessons, you're not gonna have them, but you will have pretty much page like this. All right, so when you're in, uh, this is uh, the screen where you're gonna have, the, the first screen you open. So you're gonna have my lessons, obviously for starters, you're not gonna have anything. But there are would be your reports. That's report after each lesson you run with kids. It would give you, I will show you how reports look like. Uh, there's a Nearpod library, which is good. There's teacher resources. So near Nearpod library, if you click, if you teach um, in the regular schools, because in, in language, I didn't find that I could Google and uh, find any lessons. Um, in Ukrainian, I couldn't. In French, probably you could. In Spanish, you could, I saw they exist, uh, but in any other languages, you, you just would need to create your own, which is very easy and quick. Um, so, but if you do have, a, let's say you teach something else and you go to the Nearpod library and something like this, a simple compound machine you found and it's a lesson ready for you. Uh, you could tweak, you, you can just do edit and change a little bit, whatever you want but it basically allow you to take any lessons that exist on a Nearpod and a change into whatever you desire. You can drop something from your, that lesson, you can add something and it become like yours, but then you know it adds to the Nearpod. So you would see the same topic. It could be a lot of lesson in a Nearpod library because people are adding, but each of them would be a little bit different because somebody add to it. Um, so, that's what the you know when I open I click the Nearpod library and uh, it gives you all the subject math English science social studies and so on grades you can choose grades further um, and the languages as I said it's only three languages but um, I found something in Ukrainian but it's like I don't know how how I did I maybe I'm sure they are they exist in Ukrainian as well. Um, so as soon as you create library and if you wish that, uh, you, sorry, you create your own lesson and you wish to add to the um, Nearpod library, you could do that as well and the people could use your lessons next time. Too. Um, so my lessons, if you want to create, you go to lesson, you choose the lesson, um, you want to create from scratch or you can download video and work around it or you download your Google Slides. So that's how easy it is. Um, so when you click, see, I, I did add untitled lesson, so I'm starting new lesson. Add over here, so you can drag or drop, but I basically go to upload files. Um, see, it gives you either files or from your Google Drive, from your cloud, or something, another documents. And I usually do from Google Drive, I click here, and then I get to this page where I just download my slides. So for example, I download all my PowerPoint that I had before and uh, about for Ukrainian um, language and 
it gives me all my just Google Slides become over here. And then in between, you just go and you add whatever you need. So you can add a slide in between. Um, so you add a slide and again, you can bring a, for, again another slide from the document. You could choose over here different activities in between each slide. Like I like to use open-ended question where I would ask prior, like we're going to talk about sport. What sport do you know? And then they have to answer. Match in pairs, then a little bit um, in land, which I do a lot of uh, download pictures and then words and they have to match. Uh, quizzes, just a little quizzes at the end for them to understand. Flipgrid, draw or collaborative board, poll, fill in the blank, memory test. So all of those activities that the kids could do, you could just with one click add it between each um, slide. Um, so that's a closer again, the same thing that it was showing and you know, you click quiz and then you're going to create quiz and I show how they look like. How to share your lesson. So when your lesson is ready, now it's in your near pod there, how to share with your students. It's so easy. So you come to class and you said, okay, kids get your devices. You do, um, you could do live participation plus Zoom or usually if in the class you do live participation. You also can give as a homework. If you give as a homework, you do student paste, then each student would be at a different pace doing themselves lessons. But if you want to do it, let's say on a board, share your screen, or if you're in a classroom, you do on a big board and they have each, each devices, then you would choose a live participation. Um, when you choose that, it gives you this code. Each kid would going to go to Nearport, um, put this code, so they they going to join dot dot com, put this code, and then they are in my lesson, and you run the lesson. So at the end, when the session is over, um, and and during the lesson, you kind of see how students are working. If Johnny doesn't work, it shows he doesn't write anything, and you can right away ask like, what's going on? Is everything okay? Maybe your device doesn't work, or you know. Uh, this way you see that they are working rather like normally when I teach sometimes now a lesson in science and I'm talking, showing them video, I really don't know if they're watching or not. But with this one, I throw one little question in between slides and they need to answer and I know they are on task. So it gives you um, kind of idea when did you run session, how many students were in a session and further you click on the report so it stays there. It would give you, for example, this is a summary. So it shows that uh, how many students participated, how many questions were answered, skipped. Over here, like if you have a quiz, then that's a general participation. Um, with a quiz, you see that there were 17 wrong ones, so most of them were correct, and there were zero no answer, meaning everyone participated. And here it would give you all the names with a quiz your poll, your open-ended question, they have to draw, all of that, how they did participate in every of that activity during the class. So it kind of neat. So it gives you really assessment that right away is you see how do they understand the topic or not. Um, so this one I also will, so when I'm going to post or uh, Trudy will send you, I can post it here at the end of the link to my presentation. You can just click here. And it will also give you step-by-step -step video how to do it. Um, so there is no, no need to write this down. But I want to really show you and share first um, how it would look like. So I'm going to go to my Nearpod and I want to really you to have that device maybe on a phone, different device, or right now you could put me on a side and just listen, but really to, to see how it will look to students. So you go, here's my library. So I have in a library some science classes, some um, Ukrainian. The thing is, this is a free, it's a silver. So silver, the only, you, you get pretty much all of the access that is gold or platinum. Next is gold, platinum, whatever. Um, but for that, you need to pay. And it's a US dollars. And I believe it is like um, uh 200 something $50 a year US. But with a silver, it gives you all the same access to everything. 
except you cannot store a lot of a lot of lessons here. That's the only downside for the free copy. But what I do, you know, after I run and I move on, I just, if I run out of space, I just delete them. Your still PowerPoint stays in your Google Drive. Um, so that's just how it is. Um, you, can, you can certainly save them in your Google Drive, but you can save a lot of here if you don't have access to gold account. I know university, if you have university account, they do have a gold, everyone, because that's what my student teacher had, and he didn't buy anything. Uh, some schools purchase him too, but, you know, I found working with silver account is not bad. So I'm going to go to my live participation, and I want to really you to tune in and just to, to get your idea how it would be for students, rather than showing them um, the lesson. They, they had to participate and write something. So it will be in Ukrainian, so Ukrainian language, but I will ask you, let's say, what is the question about, and you can write, and you will see what, what actually the teacher would see. So this is a quote that the students would put in quote. And so if you didn't, so they write the quote down, you just exit, and if they didn't have enough time, somebody came late, uh, late, the code always stays in this left corner. So if you show them board or you're sharing, like I'm sharing right now a screen, um, the students that were late can always get the code here. You would see that, well, when you go to your library and you open, it will give you a code right in the middle, but then I exit it and the code stays over here in, a, in the corner. So when students late, they always can get it. So I want you to try and just write that quote. So go to um, join.nearpot.com. So maybe I'm going to go back to, to the beginning here. Let, let me see if I go to the first page. Nope. Um, Okay, so I see people joining, at least couple, so you will see how it looks like. But it, so, but it really, so let's say this is for grade eight and the topic was sport. So we just started learning about sport. And you know, you assume they talked about sport and kind of sports before. Um, so, you know, you incorporate a lot of grammar. So the, this is the first lesson you're going to teach them on this topic. Uh, I see the three people, so you would see how many people sign up, and you could see the names and a total of them. Over here, it says hide student's name, so you're hidden, uh, and, or you can show. So look, when I click here, you see everyone, uh, but if they're going to write, it's going to show what each student wrote. So sometimes, you know, you don't want to put them in that position, so you want to hide the student's name. So I'm going to talk about sport and I'm starting kind of talking about sport the first what is a sport and why do we need to do and then before going about kinds of sport I'm I act, uh, asking them uh, would you like to approve students no um, so I'm asking them so this is like a brainstorming write for me what kind of sports do you know and the kids have ability to actually switch keyboard in your own language and write not in english but in ukrainian so over here so let's say write for me whatever you see on your screen can you write for me what kind of sports do you know write for me one two whatever so as students start writing all of the sports are going to be here like what kind of sports basketball soccer biking swimming and then you see students are writing, so they're gonna come up with a different list. Sometimes you're going to say, okay, just make sure you write down something different, what's already you see on those um, posts. So you, yeah, and they're writing in your own language, in their own language, so it's going to be you know, in your language, native, not in English. And so the kids are trying because they can see how many they wrote, so they try and ask, much as they can to write the most what they know, right? So you've done it, you move on. So you move on, you talked about different kind of sports and you wanna you know, concentrate on the major one. 
teach about that, talk about each sport. I'm going to skip this all. Um, then it comes to the page where I'm going to tell them about that there are sports that we play and there's where you have to have a teams and there are sports where you um, don't play teams. So a little bit of grammar and we talked about that grammar, how we say, you know, I do gymnastic, I do dance, but I play hockey, right? So here, when I taught them there, I'm going to ask them uh, that they need to write now for me all of the kinds of sport that they can play, the playable, not the one that like gymnastic, you can play gymnastic, you do gymnastic, right? So now they have to think what they came up before about different kind of sport and write for me everything here that would be a playable. So we play basketball, right? Soccer and so on. And now they all going to participate and you're going to see how, how they work. So they're going to maybe hmm, think about who wrote what, what kind of sport and right here. So then you move on to, and again, so you always ask you, it's a collaborative board. So do you want to approve them before they post or not? I usually say no, because kids usually don't post silly stuff. But if they do, you have the opportunity to block them and only to post whatever they write after you approve. Um, so I, I say no. Now, after that, I'm asking them, okay, now think about all of the sport that you cannot play, but like gymnastics, you do gymnastics, you do dance, what else over here? And let's write for me, which sport is not the boxing, all right? What else do you think that you cannot, uh, you can't say I play gymnastic, you say I do gymnastics. So we talked about that grammar and now they have to think about it. Here you go and they coming up and everyone could see that who's, who's writing, what's writing and they, oh, karate, I didn't think about it. Here you go. So the kids, you see it, uh, the teachers see it. So it kind of it gives you idea to kids like, oh no, I don't know about a lot because they might know a lot about in English, but maybe they don't know the name in Ukrainian and they would say, how do you write in Ukrainian? Or maybe they have a different device and quickly do research. How to say that uh, um, parasailing in Ukrainian or how to say fencing in Ukrainian. So they learn more Ukrainian vocabulary. Um, then I talk about the winter sports. So here you go is a was example that I did. I downloaded from PDF file, just a page and they could click and see and read it. Okay, that's a winter sport. Um, and they go back. And hopefully I know how to go back. Do I go back here? Yes. So um, we talked about again sport, um, that there are sport that the people do for entertainment and for money. Uh, we talked about uh, popular sports um, in Ukraine. Um, so a different again, there are again, Olympic sports. Again, I downloaded from PDF file that I have. So you click on it and they go into study all of the Olympic and you talk with them. You can ask them to read in turns. Um, and uh, moving on. So at the end, what I did, there's a little bit here grammar about how do you write what. So at the end, I ask them here, now they have to, after we learn this grammar on two slides that I just skipped, I do ask them, okay, I have to make the sentences with the words that we just study, which is um, doing, um, um, I'm interested in playing something. And I also was fascinated with something. So those are three words they have to use, verbs, and they have to also use the nouns in locative case. So we just, before that, we went over the locative case and announced how they change in locative case. And they have to say, use all of the vocabulary they just learned about sport and make sentences. So here, make sentence for me with any, um, any just vocabulary you learn, any sport, name of the sport you learn. Like I, uh, I play hockey or you can say I play gymnastic, I do gymnastic, or I, I, like gymna I like 
doing gymnastic, right? Um, I do um, Taekwondo. You can say I play Taekwondo. So now they will be writing and creating sentences. And as they write, you're going to see it over here. And you see, if I go hide the students, so I usually in a class hide the students so they don't see who's writing. So they would say, oh yeah, you made a mistake, silly. So I do hide them. And so when you say, oh, okay, see, write something and I would see it over here, what's writing. And you right away say, okay, well, Johnny, um, remember we talked about the ending in locative case is this, and in om. So could you please try again? So right away, you kind of give them hint and you see it if they are really using what you just learned or not. Then at the end, I also add a little quiz. So the quiz again, you can hide the names, you can show the names, really hiding is good. So there is a you quiz and then I, I created six questions here, which was very easy and quick to do. Um, so I guess the you have to do it and definitely it's in Ukrainian, but you will see the picture. For some reason, I don't see, I don't know why, but you see it. Do you see on your end the quiz? Yes, I'm doing the quiz. So the quiz, what I did, I put just pictures and they have to name the correct, um, correct name of the sport. So um i guess it's in ukrainian you probably won't get it but hey try as you see i could see how many people answer how many questions are they correct or incorrect so will it really give you idea <clears throat> did they learn or not if you see that there are a lot of kids writing incorrectly that's your assessment maybe you have to reteach or spend a little bit more time on this um topic um if this you're actually doing a lot of correct so you know you know ukrainian so <laughs> Um, yeah, so after the done quiz, it will give you a then report how they did. Um, and then by each student. So if you want to use, if let's say you let this lesson will be a little bit longer and you spend two classes and you want to use for summative assessment, for formative assessment, you take that. So that will give you idea. That's it. And that would be end. So and I'm not sure what I'm, and that comes to the end. So I, I did a lot. So for example, I taught Ukrainian house and uh, before about like, what is in Ukrainian house, what component before I'm going to show, I, I wanted to see what they, what they knew. So I would write, um, you know, write for me, uh, where do you think uh, the icons were located in an old Ukrainian house? And they would, you know, come up. Some of them would know it's supposed to be in a corner and there was a name for it, Pokut. Um, so it kind of, it, it gives you that they don't listen just to your presentation and maybe sleep over there on that end of the um, uh, screen, but really participating actively in So, um So, I'm not sure if you want me to kind of take the Google, uh, any Google Drive and drop it and show how you can change. And maybe if you do have your own right now, uh, any PowerPoint, so you can try to put it in and, and see how easy it is to add just the open-ended questions. Uh, the, that board is very good one because then, you know, they have to quiz maybe a little bit. You have to work. Um, spend five ten minutes longer to create little quizzes and again quizzes don't have to be big uh three five questions for kids just to see if they really learn something okay so so you go to, to here and you want to create your own let's say you don't have anything here you want to really create your own from scratch so you click create and you want to create google slides because that's where you want to get it uh oh you have to have a google okay never mind you're going to create a lesson all right so it goes untitled lesson so you can title later but over here you go to upload add the content and activity 
So you're going to add. So where you want to add, you can choose anything here, any PDF file, video, slides, and so on. So what I did wanted to add is my Google Slides before I'm going to change everything. So therefore, I will go to over here and I say Upload Files. So Upload Files, it gives you again from your any files you want, your Microsoft Word, you, your uh, cloud. I want it from Google Drive. So it, it gets me to my Google Drive right away. Remember, everything is connected because you use your Google um, account to get in. I will select this one. Um, I want an individual slide. So it creates your individual slides where you're going to put anything between slides. So all of those are uh, created here. So created here, it gets over here that it's whoever it is, PowerPoint was. So I don't want it, I will delete it. And I say delete. So now I delete it and I just have something what it is. So now let's say it talks about different profession and you know what's veterinarian doing, what a dentist doing, uh, but maybe it's not there. And you can, in between, you want to pause. It says add slide, add content, or activity. So you want to add activity. Let's say I want to add a question before I'm going to talk about dentist. And I put there, it opens to the page where you're going to get here. And you need to write a question. And you, let's say, and I'm just going to write in English. So let's say before you're going to talk about the dentist profession, you're going to say, um, what do you know or where, uh, what do you know about um, a dentist? Dentist uh, profession or something or any questions. You would say maybe, what do you think dentists do? Or where do you think that dentists were? Whatever question the prior, I want to see prior, what do they know of? Or what do you think dentist is in Ukrainian? If you teach in language, then maybe it's good to know. Do they know that? You know, they don't know all the vocabulary, maybe. That's it. I'm doing that. Save. So now when you go back, this is the open-ended question where you had to answer. So they, you, you present this, then they have that question and they have to answer. And then you go to next one. So let's say in between you found little video and you want to add a video here because you see that they, you have a, a video about doctors. So you want to insert a video here. And that's a content. So open-ended question, add a content, add a video. So you can download easily a little video in between your presentation from YouTube. So right away it gets you to video library, which is basically YouTube. If you don't want to use the video library, what in a video, you can just go down and it says YouTube library and you write it down. What's a video you want to do? You want a video do about doctor and you find the video, you download video, you probably find, let's say Ebola here. Doctor is in. Oh, I want you want to get this video. So you click on a video, you say you recommend maximum storage. Okay, my storage is out, so that's why. No, thank you. Uh, maybe I'll, I will choose the smaller video. It still have to upgrade. So you choose the video and it would download video. So that's the thing that you have to watch that you kind of don't have that you still have a room to create your presentation. So for me to move on and to add any videos, I have to go to my uh, library and uh, delete something. So, But you can add any little videos. And then if you want to questions about videos after that, you can open again, open que uh, uh, ended question. So at the end, let's say you want going to add, you can add brainstorming. So again, click here, add activity. Yeah, very popular time to climb. So then they will see how they're running for each other, answering questions. I like open-ended. 
uh, obviously the collaborative board that's where they have to brainstorm the vocabulary of what they know uh, and if you want to create a quiz it leads you to the quiz where you're going to ask questions and answer so with a quiz uh, you ask the question and you have to choose at least two answers, otherwise it won't allow you. So the question is, what is, what is, I don't know, doctor in Ukrainian, Ukrainian, oh. And then you ask the question and over here you would say to answer. So I would say doctor. And then you go another one, at least two, and you say, I don't know, doctor. You choose the right answer right away here. And you say, uh, add the questions. So that create one question and then you create a couple questions you want it, and then you save. That's going to be your quiz in between. And, and the same, so any activity you want in between any slide, whatever uh, about, let's say this one is musician and you want to ask something about musician, you add either content or activity. We have a little video about musician. You can include, there is a, some like even field trips, you can take them to um, their simulations you can add Field trips is a places, so if you learn about places, you can add. It's a, you know, you click to field trip, and it asks you what destination you you want to go. Saskatoon. Saskatoon. I don't know if there's Saskatoon. I think this one is like <laughs> very, um, very famous places. Uh, let's say Glacier. You want to go to Glacier. And, and preview, look how neat it is going to be. So it talks about whatever it is you study and you want to, so they can go 3D, go to places, look around, so study. So if you study some, I don't know, places, history, there's a lot of stuff in there. So kind of that, that's the VR field trip done. And then it would be in between that a little, um, the field trip is here. See, it would show up like a field trip. Add, I don't know what else do we want to add. You can add a poll and ask question and see, like usually poll at the end, what do you think? How did you understand the lesson? And then they have to, you know, choose or, or answer the question. Lilia, can, we have a question. Yes. It's from Lucia. Yes. Uh, Leah, if you have uh, asked your students a question, can you get their responses orally uh, as opposed to just having them write it down and then it goes into your box somewhere? Yes, you can because you still connect it with them, right? They listen either in class and they have a devices in front or you connect it like right now. I could ask you a question when I speak i talk about this one if i present in this slide and i'm talking about the the eye doctor i could say okay so um see when usually we learn we also learn locative case and how would the ending where each of those profession works so the the eye doctor works at the clinic but in ukrainian we would change the ending so locative case um and let's say you don't have it but in before you ask, where do you think uh, uh, that he works or she works? And they would say, they would work the clinic or clinica, and a lot of them would say they would work in clinic and you would say, oh, remember the rule we learned that kids change say, and that's how they're going to answer. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that oral also that they can talk, they could interact and write. Okay, thank you. But you know what many with a uh, with um, junior high, uh, what we found um, is that um, you ask them question orally and they don't really want to answer. They're hiding behind camera. I don't know how university students are, 
but uh, an elementary I found too when my daughter is at home, she likes to talk, they all like to talk junior high, they all like to no camera off and they sit in there quietly and you're just like, okay guys, could you tell me what do you think about this one? And nobody answers unless you really pinpoint, like could you so-and-so say, so, but with you using this program, if I ask the question here, they need to answer because they know that I see they not answering, right? Do you know what I mean? That's why this one is really works when we are online learning. So uh, really the problem with online learning with junior high is like, and, and high school, it's like hiding behind that camera, behind the screen. They think, okay, I'm here, I'm safe. Um, they think I'm listening, but I might do whatever I want to do. But when I do this lesson, well, they have to do right. They have to produce something. They have to be active learners. So, and the kids actually liked it. You know, after my student teacher introduced this, they always ask if you just do regular ones, like, oh, can we do rather than near pods? Because they really want to, you know, do something and participate. So. I have a further question. Uh, can you put students into classrooms or where they can interact and have little conversations? No, because when you run this lesson, they are all in your classes. That would be you would put them in the you would create the classrooms in your Google Meet or your Microsoft Teams. That's where you need to create lessons. And then you would ask them maybe to do the student pace so they do on their own, right? And they could talk within the group as they working on this assignment. Okay. But if you do this way, then definitely they all in your classroom already. You can't put them unless you did pr prior to this, you post them in different classes. So then um, they still can hear you, but they could chat with chat with each other and, and other groups won't hear. So you just have to set up in your Google Meet or your Microsoft Teams prior, put them in groups. Oh, this is wonderful. So Lydia, I have a question. Did you guys use it also for um, little kids, kindergartners uh, who don't? You know, or is it just for the older students? You know what? Uh, all my Ukrainian school, the Saturday school and my Ukrainian school, we do junior high. Mm -hmm. So and uh, it's junior high and the first year of high school in my Ukrainian Saturday school. Um, so, but you know, this one you definitely can use with elementary kids too. It's easy to use. As soon as they have a quote, they see whatever you change in screen, they see on a screen and they need to write. So in English, it would be easy. In your own language, you just have to teach them prior how to switch the keyboard. If there is a keyboard available, that's another thing that you have to make sure you have it. Like, uh, they, there is a phonetic Ukrainian keyboard and it's easy to, to quickly type because every letter in English corresponds with the same sound letter in Ukrainian. But I assume there's a, all different languages that available for keyboard. So then the kids, elementary kids could also type in, in your own language, right? You teach them how to do it probably already in elementary, uh, on elementary level, so definitely. So with elementary, I would include more maybe pictures to match. Um, the, the quizzes also would be like I did a quiz, what's a picture and answer the, you know, do vocabulary, answer the questions. Mm -hmm. With a high, with a junior high, I do a lot of when I teach them a grammar, then I wanted them to, okay, now write me a sentence using this one in this case, look, case or use the past tense, present tense. Uh, and they have to write it. And as they write, I see it right away what they're writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's better to assess them this way than rather I would give them assignment and say, okay, do an assignment and then submit it to me on a Google Classroom. And after I have to spend extra time, half an hour, an hour to go over to check it. When here, I can give them feedback, like it's ongoing feedback. I see where they're making mistakes and I said, okay, you need to pay attention to this ending or to over here. So it kind of 
that's where it's easy um, in a way that you know it's ongoing assessment right away and you can correct them on a spot and they can correct and start writing correctly rather you're going to say okay spend this class on doing this worksheet and then submit it to me and then you see that they don't understand anything everything is wrong and then they spend half an hour doing all, all that without even knowing it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I've noticed that you can use Flipgrid, which gives you a space for some maybe classwork when they have to work on a project. Um, so, so yeah, I will definitely try this <laughs> and suggest it to our teachers because they are using just, a, they are sharing PowerPoint and then they ask questions, right? So the students are not really typing anything in, but this is more interactive because they can actually respond and uh, write the word teacher yeah. can see it so it's a uh, uh, yeah i like it really yeah but really if, if you saw there's a pdf you can put your even if you don't have a powerpoint you can put your pdf and your worksheets but then in between create that question or create that uh, the brainstorming board the board that is good okay what do you think um you start let's learn in about i don't know any topic first you need to learn vocabulary be before you do anything um they might know something in grade eight do you think they know sports yes they do maybe 10 basic sports but if, when it comes into deeper they don't know in english i mean they don't know in ukrainian they know in english what it is it's like how are you going to say this one and how do you say this one so it's interesting to know but when they brainstorming and they put it out there and oh yeah okay now i learned this so it kind of really uh, we found this one is more interactive and the kids like it like much better than you just go and show them powerpoint and teach them something any other questions i'm doing it i'm doing a lesson tomorrow and my lesson is honestly about Saskatchewan. And I really seriously was wondering if they have Canadian cities. So I wasn't just picking Saskatoon for being stupid. Oh, so for the do, do you think they're really Saskatoon? Probably. But you know, you can remember, you can find a little video on Saskatoon or Saskatchewan and incorporate and the video enough, there. Yeah. And then ask the question right after a video, put open-ended question. What did you okay. see, you know, was in the, in the center video. in a center on a main street in Saskatoon? And they have to answer or whatever, right? Perfect. I think Ileana had her hand up. Hi, thank you very much. This is very informative and I'm excited to try to use it. I do wanted to um, make some slides. I'm teaching pre-KK on Zoom, so they can't type yet. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it would probably be more of a verbal response, but I do want to be able to make some slides for phonics and introduce, um, the word with the picture and we can do it together with this method. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So what I wanted to ask you was, is it also pos possible to, do a paper copy of the slide that is produced, that is created. If you can print, print it from there. I never thought about it. You can print it on from your Google uh, Drive. But when you create it over here, not really sure. Oh, OK. Very good question. I don't think so. So I would but, probably just save you can save it to the iCloud or whatever, save it to a cloud and go back and refer to it. But, uh, but, but hold on. So if I'm going to share back, go back to my library and I'm going to show you present now uh, window. So I'm going to go back to my Nearpod and I will share it. So in your Nearpod, so let's say you want to do this presentation and you would like to print somewhere so you can always add it anytime even though you finish and you show to kids and you want to change for next time there's mm -hmm. an option to add it 
um, mm. over here, if you click here, duplicate, yeah, export to PDF, and then you will be uh, printing it. Do you see? Okay. So yeah, you I export see. the whole lesson, you can share with teachers, you can duplicate and do two different ones, add to folder even, but if you export to PDF, definitely can print it. Super, thank you very much. All right, any others? Where is that to stop sharing? So I have a question, Lilia. So you mentioned that with a Silvo standard, you can upload only so many uh, PowerPoints. So how many on average you can you can have with that uh, level? You know what? I have quite few in my libraries. So if, if I look, so four, 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 I have about 20. And mm -hmm. again, it depends if, if you have a video content and what do you have in yours. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you have to obviously free and to create new ones. But if you use university account, do you, you have a university account, Google, mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. have it both for free. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing I wanted you to show, one more thing that is uh, very important, I wanted you to show something. So you go to, I'm going to present again, and I will go to my PowerPoint. So I'm going to do share screen, right? So let's say I have uh, over here some Google, uh, uh, some slides. So I'm going to open my slide. Google is supposed to be on a Google slides. If it's on a PowerPoint, it won't work. But if you have anything that done on a Google slides, do you see this over here? It says ads on. So you click on ads on and there's your near pod and you just click on a near pod and it opens near pod. And right away you can over here work in your Google drive, in your Google slide presentation, add after each slide, whatever you need to add. So it gives you to this. Uh huh. That's where that's where perk that you can add from here. So because I had a trial before gold one and I was able to add here. You have to have a gold um, to to do it. And they give you for free. I I did use it. Maybe they give you all the time free and you just keep using it. Thirty days. Um, so if you have a gold, so you just click here and you will be able to add everything right in there right in there so you don't have to even go to the to nearport so there is a one from nearport that you're going to create and download your file right here otherwise if you have a gold one then you could work from that screen so here you just have to upload your files so get it from there get it from here and work when you have a gold one then you can right away click add on and all of your Again, near pod going to be on a side and you can just add it over here. So that's another option when you have your gold. Um, so Nina, you would have a gold one because my student teachers from university, they did. And they didn't even know where they got it. They said, oh, the university must have had it because they used university account. Mm -hmm. So, but even if I have it and my teachers do not, uh, that's a problem, right? Ah, that's so. it, yeah. So you, your teachers uh -huh. should be using just a regular. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah. 20 lessons, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, if you create 20 interactive lessons, even per year, you see the kids for 30, 30 days, yes. right? 30 days. So that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, Lilia, when you finish, uh, you, you said that it is still saved on your Google Drive. So, and I understand that uh you can still use it but it's not interactive or how does it work when it expires if you delete it then it's going to be you you have whatever you had before but the interactive part will if you delete it from okay. but it would be deleted yeah okay so you, you almost need to have that gold one and my school at like saint brandon we were going to get it but it was already after christmas and it was kind of too expensive to do it after Christmas. If you are using whole year, then yeah, that's, you know, it's durable. But for Saturday school, uh, I don't know, it's too much money to use for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm just have... wondering if we as organization would be able to purchase it for all schools, but we can discuss it later after the presentation. That would be nice. Yeah, we will look into this and uh well, yeah that's that's idea because uh you could 
pur you could purchase as an organization and mm -hmm. give to up to 20 or 30, include 30 teachers. Um, because I we looked into it and they told us how much to pay mm -hmm. and we thought it was too expensive to pay for just half a year because they don't mm -hmm. give you discount for two year or half a year. Um, mm -hmm. But if you do that, you include so many teachers. Uh, like even if you include a one teacher from each school, the teacher could share account and have a, just a one account and develop all the lesson and still use it, right? Mm -hmm. They can have they a, could school create a school account and use it. This could be, yeah, okay, we will discuss it. This is wonderful, actually. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I have another question, Leila. Uh, you were saying, you know, you have all these responses from students, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you put their responses into folders or into files so that you can keep them all organized? Yes. It give it's it's right in your near port like you would have it under presentation each report saves right away so again if i'm going to go back and show you the lesson you will see where it is near port presentation let's see and i don't want a near port presentation i want to go back to near port so if you look at the lesson i just did do you see the screen okay okay so if you look at the lesson we just did now okay this uh sport i did it with you so you're going on top here and you show reports and then reports just saves automatically and stays here as long as you didn't delete the data so it's you click there and it shows that today i had a six students and it shows what day and you click on the report and in report it would say how many wrong how many right i would have your names here how much you did on a quiz how much you did on an open-ended how much overall you participated in a lesson do you see yes so and it, it stays in your lesson as long as you stays here in your report so all the reports would be there um unless you're going to delete it so see your reports that's where your reports would go i think this is even wonderful for a school that wants to get accreditation you Lina, are accredited already but for yeah. the schools that need to provide this and that documentation i think this would be wonderful proof um because it shows all all the stats how many students and the level yeah this looks great well it certainly gives you idea and especially you know you can do your quiz uh, you know i what i found now with a quiz is like junior high you create we try to create quizzes on on forms google forms which is you know they do it on a spot and gives you results but the kids they all cheating they you know they don't turn camera off because they tell oh my camera doesn't work today and what can you do nothing so what they do, they on a phone with each other and they check in answers and all this. If I'm going to do lesson and I taught them and maybe next time I do it again, reviewing this lesson. And at the end, I will give them 10 questions where they have to write to me right away here and they can't talk to each other because I could hear them. Right. Then this is a better assessment that I would, you know, spend a half an hour creating a Google forums um uh, on a google forms quiz give it to them and then what they all cheated and how i know they cheated because the answer is like not what we've learned they answer in something like i did chemistry for example and uh, they have to name the molecules and the name is like we learn how to name using the prefixes like dihydrogen uh, trisulfite what they would find they would find some kind of names the common names from internet, then it's not what I was asking. It's like, I know they cheated, right? So, but over here, if I see them answering that, I would say, oh, sorry, could you use the name in that we learn in class and not the one you're finding now on internet? They was like, oh, okay, I will. And they would right away do it because you see them working on a sport. Wonderful. So are there more questions? I think everybody right now feels like, okay, I want to do this. 
you know, you should try one to do. It's pretty easy. Like I will. Um, is there a chat here that I could share the link, or Trudy, do you want? To, I will send it to you, mm -hmm. link to um, my PowerPoint. There's definitely chat. It's in the top right hand corner. Okay, where I see myself there, or I see chat. Yeah. Let's see if I, I copied before. Okay, I copied before. So here I'm sending. So that would be a link to my PowerPoint where you want to copy and paste. Um, and uh, just if you forgot the step, but it's, you know, when you get to near code, it's pretty easy. Create a lesson and it shows you what you want to choose. It's not that bad. Like I learned so fast. Like I was very excited to see how he used it and the kids, how kids responded. You know, the kids were more interested in something interactive rather than just sitting passively and listen to PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. And yes, it took about like two minutes to sign in just as you were presenting and guiding us. So it's it's it doesn't take too much class time uh, to do it on the spot. So this is wonderful. I'm curious to see how it will work with little kids tomorrow. Yeah, so I'll give you some feedback. So how old, Trudy? How, how old are you? Um, grade two and grade three. Yeah, well, they they can type already, right? Something a little bit. So I guess I'm sure they can, except for we never do it in class because I don't think kids need more technology. So I'm well, like, as a teacher, I never I never do technology with them. Not right now, you're online, right? And now I'm screwed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think no, online is online. This is better <laughs> when you do it with kids rather than the teacher assigning something and the kids have to do at home elementary and they said oh teacher didn't explain what to do and yes teacher did but they they didn't pay attention they maybe forgot but here when you do it together with them and guide them and they answer and you see they doing something i think it most more effective kids learn something rather than okay do it this one if you have a questions ask and nobody asks questions because they don't want to feel stupid i think the hard part is going to be to see if they can all sign in if they can all sign in and put in the codes i think it's they can easily do it yeah but i think it's easy to sign in i think when i uh, presented it kind of ate the first um, part of it and you get into um you got already the one on site. So let's say you want to run the lesson. Um, I don't know which one this time you want to run uh, this one, the house. So you go and you do uh, or save changes. It was never saved. That's why you can do it. So if you didn't save changes, you can do the live participation. So you click live participation and the kids will get a screen where on a screen it would it, it says join, mm -hmm. so they have to go to join.nearcode.com. When they get there, they need to type this code. That's it. But they have to get to the other website. Yeah, That's well, tell them, the tell them to do like this. You tell them the, what they see on the screen. Uh, maybe you can post it prior on a Google Classroom join.nearpod.com so that they can this is what they can see so they copy and they see it this you can post or it maybe on a google classroom to do it for the first time for them you know when, no. when parents at I the think beginning Trudy, Trudy if you post in a google classroom please click on this for our lesson they click here and mm -hmm. as they click here enter the code this is what they see and you're going to show them okay guys so you now you on this screen please enter this code i z r t c here you go and then you will see who's joined and if somebody not yeah, maybe you ask you have a trouble maybe guide them but if you prior post it on a google classroom uh this you know join.nearpod.com when mm -hmm. they click on that link, they automatically will get them to here just to enter the code. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try that with my um, grade sixes because I do FSL as well. 
Yeah, it looks great. Ileana had her hand up again because she's got another fantastic question. As soon as that came out of my mouth, I thought it sounded accusatory and I did not mean it that way. Uh, no. Sorry. <laughs> um, so you brought up a really uh, point that was very interesting to me. So I was going to ask her because my kids are pre-KK, um, they, they will not be able to maneuver that as well. So I go on Zoom. I just want to ask you the actual physical technology of it. They come on, they join the link, they come on Zoom. Then do I take them to, to Nearpod or do I bring Nearpod into Zoom? No, you first, you need to open that in Zoom. And when you do in Zoom, open on your screen, you're going to tell them, I posted the link in Google Classroom, but you open your Zoom, you share your screen, and you do live participation click it will give you code and the kids need to then add, put that code otherwise in. if they all enter they can enter without you right right so when they look at your screen now you say okay now go to google classroom click on a link join.nearpod.com and now copy this write down this uh, you know code and everyone will be in Okay. So on a Zoom, you would need to, in a Zoom, share just like I shared now your near, your lesson. Okay. Thank you. So what they would see actually when they, they join, they would see on their screen same what you do because it's going to be you let when you switch to next slide, they, they will see switch. If you give them choice to student pace, then they can do it on their own and. You know, you don't have to show anything on a screen. They would have each of them on their own pace. But if you want to do together, then you will be doing from the uh, from the Zoom, opening your near pod, sharing. I guess it's easy to work with junior high compared to pre-K for sure. I can't even imagine. And like if the student had maybe the technical difficulty and somebody couldn't do the code or all of that, but that would probably result on of a slow internet on their side. So it's not really related to the near put, but rather maybe connection issues, right? Well, it, there are sometimes connection that the kids during the class, they can join and they text you. I can join. My internet is weak. But how do they text you that it's weak? I don't know. There's always hmm. going to be an issue with with some students, but I mean, oh, mostly not. With the elementary, I assume there are adults at home and they can help them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So because with junior high, when they tell me the internet doesn't work, I can't tell, oh, can you ask your mom or dad to fix? Because there might be no mom and dad during that time. But with mm -hmm. elementary, there, you know, you could, you could say, oh, can you go help, ask for help, whoever is adult at home. Yeah. Wonderful. So, Lilia, uh, if there are no more questions, do you guys have any questions? This was, this was wonderful, Lilia. Really, we learned so much. And uh, I'm going to suggest this to Mike, but before we will have a discussion, uh, with ELA board about the possibility maybe to buy this for ELA schools. And we will see, uh, because I think, I don't know for how long we will be online, three weeks, who knows if we will be bounce back or not. I don't know, hopefully more people will get vaccinated and- uh, But I think, you know, at, at this point, at the end of the year, it doesn't, uh, it, it's very expensive to buy because they sell you for a year. They don't give you for, you yeah, know, raise so, so, for months. But if everyone would try to do this one, like a one lesson and two, and see how they like it, and maybe mm -hmm. in the future, if there's a need that they the schools like it and they found that they need this goal, mm -hmm. rather because you know they want to keep those lessons, and uh, but then maybe next year you could you know mm -hmm. September you could discuss even if we mm -hmm. are in a classroom like we use in a classroom a lot. Kids have a devices. I do on a whiteboard run. And uh, kids are doing and participating. It's, you know, they like it more. And sometimes mm -hmm. when we switch to regular, they said, 
no today no near court they disappointed mm -hmm. because they really want to maybe they want to show what they know you know by writing mm -hmm. that's another thing so so Lydia the school uh, it is the school year not the calendar no, year no it's a school year yeah school year okay wonderful yeah okay. We will, we will look into this and uh yeah we will, we will keep you updated <laughs> because we looked just before christmas and mm -hmm. uh, they told us it was the same price for six months uh, as for a whole year they mm -hmm. wouldn't pro so that's on reddit mm -hmm. wonderful thank you so much lilia this was You're so welcome um very detailed we 